Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon. I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University and welcome to Vlog 208, The Paragraph. What a brilliant suggestion. This suggestion comes from Kelly. Hello, Kelly. Kelly wanted me to extend my earlier work on The Sentence. So how fantastic is this? It is my pleasure to do so. And look, yes, wow, a paragraph really, really matters. The paragraph in your PhD, they are the vertebrae of the spine of your argument. They provide it with strength and integrity and rigor and yes, momentum and movement. But also they are a proxy for a whole series of issues that may be emerging in your prose that we'll talk about in a second. But also can I say why I really enjoyed constructing this vlog for you is that the guides on paragraphing, the how to write a paragraph, are truly terrible. So I went right the way back to primary school, all that was fun, and look at teaching guides to how to teach a paragraph. And they're dire and diabolical. So I had a ball trying to translate this pretty dire stuff on how to write a paragraph into something meaningful for PhD students. So here it is. I hope you enjoy this vlog. But firstly, I want to start with, if I will, two proxies, two scenarios for your consideration. But let's start with a premise first. And my premise is, I can determine the health of your PhD, the health of your research, via your paragraphing. Let me present two scenarios for you and see if you recognize yourself here. Scenario one, the student writes a paragraph composed of one, <laughs> two or three sentences. Is that you? Very, very short paragraphs. What that means is the student's not reading enough. They haven't got enough content, they haven't got enough research to put content into a paragraph to make it expand and extend. Right? So if you write short paragraphs, the issue is not so much the short paragraph. That's a problem, but it is a problem that signifies a whole series of other issues in your writing. So have a look at it. If you write short paragraphs, ask yourself about the scale of your reading, your note taking, and how you convey knowledge and ideas through your work. Okay, short paragraphs. Let's now go to long paragraphs. This reveals a completely different issue and problem. And can I say, some of the best students I've ever supervised wrote incredibly long paragraphs. I'm talking about paragraphs that move over three to five pages. Dr. Leanne McRae, looking at you. Leanne, one of the truly great scholars I've ever had the privilege to supervise, but very early on in her career when she was an impossibly young woman, and my goodness me, so was I, uh, she used to read everything. So what long paragraphs mean is a student like Leanne reads widely, so they're a big reader and probably a little bit nervous or reticent about writing, right? So they read everything, they're excited by ideas, they love knowledge, and they read and read and read and read and read. And then I sort of say, their dreadful supervisor says, time to write, girlfriend. And so what they do is they gush with ideas. So they simply explode with knowledge. And so sentence upon sentence upon sentence upon sentence until we've got three to five pages of a single paragraph. So that group of students, great readers, but they need to plan a little bit more before they write. So they need to separate out ideas. So here are five ideas that are five paragraphs that I'm now going to write up, okay? So they need strategies to split those incredibly long paragraphs. So that's a particular editing style. And what happens is when I'm helping those students in their rare and spectacular humans when you find them, is I get a highlighter pen and we go through the three or five pages and I put a little hook 
around the point where a new idea is emerging, right? So that helps the students see, all oh, right, so that is an idea, that's a paragraph, and that is a separate idea. I then separate it, we get them to write a topic sentence, and they learn to, to have paragraphs and to break up their ideas a little bit more. So as you can see, great paragraphing is like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. And let's face it, life is like Goldilocks and the Three Bears in my experience, because we have some paragraphs that are just too small, some paragraphs that are too large, and of course some paragraphs which are just right. And the characteristic of just right paragraphs that's my focus for today. So today's structure in the vlog is really, really simple. What is a paragraph? <laughs> and then what makes a spectacular paragraph for a PhD student? And particularly, I think, what examiners are looking for through your paragraphing. Right, so as I was reviewing the literature on the paragraph, and look, some vlogs I do for you, the literature is amazing, and it's just a privilege to share it with you and name the great names and so forth. And look, some vlogs, the literature is absolutely shocking, and this is one of them, just dreadful. So I learned a great meta lesson through creating this vlog, and that is, you know, when I've been thinking, why is paragraphing such a challenge for the young people? And I suddenly realised, of course, paragraphing is such a challenge for scholars because we were taught it so dreadfully. <laughs> so it's actually no surprise. And when I say dreadfully, we were probably just taught it with too much simplicity. Also, I think we've got so many assumptions and suggestions about writing and paragraphing in academic life, let alone in the PhD, that we're not recognising the diversity of paragraphing options. And indeed, we're not being honest with you. What are we after? What is a good paragraph for a PhD student? So today, I'm going to talk through that. So let's start with the yeah, de bit of the vlog, and that is, what is a paragraph? So a paragraph is a series of sentences. Yeah, de. But you notice I've used the word series there. And that's an important word because it's like a series circuit. Each sentence must be functional to pass on the idea to the next sentence. So they exist in a series and if one of the sentences don't work, then the whole paragraph falls down. So paragraphs are important and each sentence in a paragraph has a very distinct role. Now as we know, the first sentence of a paragraph is called the topic sentence, wow. Now what that provides is the overview, the vibe. So what is this paragraph going to be about? Where are you taking me? And that is your topic sentence. Now, once we get through the topic sentence, the issues diversify a bit and disciplines require different components from the subsequent sentences, right? So it also depends if we're doing a literature review or we're doing another part of the thesis. But often what happens at the second, third and fourth sentences is we're presenting something. So it might be we're presenting a bit of literature. So we're looking at a particular scholar, we're looking at an arc of an argument, or we're presenting a data point. Yeah? Now some particular disciplines use quotations, some do not. But in the first half of a paragraph, we do something. We present an example, we present a data point, we look at statistics, we present something. So there's the topic sentence, this is what we're doing, and then we do it. The first half of the paragraph, we do that. We present some evidence and some stuff. So these sentences start your argument and extend your argument. And then after you've presented that data point, that particular reference, the words of others, we're now at the second half of the paragraph. 
And what we do in the second half of the paragraph is we hit the interpretation of the data point, the data set, the trope, the theory, or the research that you are presenting. So the first half of a paragraph, the ideas are pretty neutral. So there's the topic sentence, that's what we're doing. Then we present some stuff pretty neutrally. And then the second half of a paragraph is where you lift into interpretation. So from the topic sentence, this is the argument I am now offering and building in this paragraph. So this is, if you will, the shaping of the argument. So you present your interpretation. Then, of course, you get to what I think is the hardest sentence to write in a paragraph, which is the last sentence of a paragraph. This, if you like, I always describe it as the compass point. You know, you've got the point of a compass and stuff moves around it, but the point stays solid. And that's really what the last sentence in a paragraph does because oh, it's hard. It is hard yakka to do this properly because you've got to sort of conclude that micro point in the paragraph and then lead the way, like the pivot point, lead the way into the next topic sentence. So this final sentence in a paragraph is the most difficult one to write because it has a lot of purposes. And most importantly, it's creating that smooth, beautiful transition. It closes one argument and it opens the reader to the next. So I've often described a paragraph as a waterfall. It's beautiful, it's smooth, it's fluid. So you can't almost see the gaps in the argument. That's great. So if the waterfall metaphor helps you, that's sort of what we're trying to do. But for some students, but particularly I think in applied social sciences, right through to the hard end of sciences, the waterfall isn't quite working for you, and I get that. But think of a paragraph as a walk. You are moving, step at a time, through an argument. You are taking your reader, your examiner, your reader, by the hand, and you are walking with them through an argument. Okay, so every sentence is a step, and the paragraph gets you somewhere. Each stage gets you somewhere. Okay, so that's the easy stuff. What is a paragraph? Done it. Thanks for playing. Boom. But the final bit of this vlog, I want to channel this specifically for you. So you know as a supervisor, as an examiner, as a reader of research, what makes a great paragraph for us. And remember, this is different from creative nonfiction. This is different from fiction. This is us. Top end of town research. What do we require of paragraphs? Let's do this. One, paragraphs allow you to make connections. Oh yeah. So a characteristic of students who are confronting difficulties or troubles in their research and indeed in their thesis is that the writing and the ideas are fragmented. Number one disaster I would argue with students writing up and a real problem when I'm examining at the moment, to be honest with you. So what happens is I'm reading student work, I'm examining student, student work, and the ideas are popping all over the place. And it's just fragmented. Okay, so ideas are bouncing about, they're not grounded, and there's no structure to the argument. So when you write a great paragraph, what you are doing is you are making connections between the disparate parts of your research. So you're, if you will, sewing together the building blocks of your research. Two, great paragraphs demonstrate your capability to communicate with others. In many ways, and as I get older, I'm terribly old, um, as I get older, I've suddenly realised the only point of research really is to disseminate it. Because if you write something and no one reads it, to be frank, what actually is the point? I can, make, I can argue the other case, but look, if you write something and no one reads it, what are we doing? A powerful paragraph, therefore, is able to take your research and move it, and particularly move it to an audience. Yeah. 
so it's able to take it, translate it, move it to new readers. So what's happening is you are able to make connections between ideas and then take those ideas and ensure that they find an audience. Three, oh my goodness, great paragraphs transform ideas into knowledge. Now you're a bright person, I know that, you are a bright person, you have ideas, you are an ideas person, that's terrific. But actually a PhD is not about good ideas. The definition of a PhD is not an original contribution to ideas, it's an original contribution to knowledge and grasp the difference. So paragraphs allow you to take a good idea that's often expressed in a topic sentence, a good idea, and work it into something, shape it into something, and that something is knowledge. Four, we learn through writing paragraphs. We learn through writing paragraphs. Paragraphs confirm the level of learning that we have achieved. So if you are able to write a considered and balanced paragraph, then you are demonstrating expertise over your topic, your field of research, your area. So yes, we learn to write by writing. There's no doubt about that. That is a maxim, that's a truth. We learn to write by writing. But we also learn to learn by writing. We learn to learn by writing. Because writing is different from thinking, we're able to express something in a paragraph that sometimes transcends what we thought we knew. I don't know if it's ever happened to you. It happens to me a lot. So I think, all oh, right, here are my notes. That's what I'm writing up. And the physical act of writing, I do something on the screen that I didn't know that I knew. Ever happened to you? It happens to me a lot. It's like, I didn't know that I knew that. Wow! Because we learn through the act of writing. So when we place information into language, we learn something. Five, huge. If you can write a great paragraph, then you control information. Now, wow, this is my obsession. Information literacy is the most important skill set on planet Earth. It is required for citizenship. We are in the mess we are now on planet Earth because we don't teach information literacy. Okay, I'll be quiet. But the point is information literacy is a very important skill set that is undertaught in schools and in universities. So a proxy for me about how you are gathering information, controlling information, emerges through your paragraphing. If you have a great paragraph, oh, that's beautiful, you have demonstrated to me that you can control information. So we've talked a lot in this vlog really about Goldilocks because I'm pretty obsessed by Goldilocks. I love the bears but Goldilocks is a very interesting cultural figure to me. You know, it goes into someone else's house and nicks stuff. That's quite an interesting sort of fable for children. But we talk a bit about Goldilocks, right? Short paragraphs confirm that you haven't read enough. So you've got no control over information because you haven't read enough stuff, yeah? But then the long paragraphs, you've read a lot but you can't control the information. Right? So if you've got those incredibly long paragraphs, you maybe need to do a little bit of work with me on information literacy. Learn to shape, learn to control all that knowledge that you're engaging with. So paragraphing requires intellectual discipline and yes, information literacy. Six, oh wow, crucial one. So a great paragraph confirms your ability to synthesize. It also confirms your ability to configure something original and understand the difference between the two. Okay, 
you need to synthesize incredibly complicated ideas in a PhD. You need to do that. You need to hear all these ideas. I'm going to synthesize them, shape them into something meaningful. That's great, important skill set. But a PhD is defined by an original contribution to knowledge. So you have to go, right, here is the synthesis. That is other people's stuff. I respect that. That's their argument. But through a paragraph, move from the synthesis to the originality and signify that movement overtly and clearly from the synthesis to the originality through your paragraph. Seven, paragraphs show that you can justify your argument. Anyone can have an opinion. Just go on to Twitter. Anyone can have an opinion. But a well-balanced paragraph shows your ability to take a premise or an assumption or an idea and move it beyond opinion into an argument, into a debate and into knowledge. It shows your capacity to build evidence, to weigh evidence and make a seamless case. Opinion is great, but a paragraph requires more of us. It requires evidence, debate and discussion. Eight, great paragraphs keep us on track. Now I read a lot of student work, I read thousands of articles and books every single year and unfortunately I have to read my own stuff. What a tragedy. And look, to be frank with you, I can't tell you it happens every day, maybe it happens once an hour of every day. And I find myself in the middle of someone's paragraph going, where exactly am I? What is going on here? Right? So I'm not oriented in the space, I'm getting lost in the argument. Because paragraphs at their best convey a journey. Here is the argument and you're helping the reader follow you on that argument. So we read a topic sentence, oh cool, I'm oriented, then you take us on a journey, remember, step at a time. You take me on that journey and I know where I am in an argument. So that means we'll be able to, if you will, step through that argument with each sentence. So always make sure in your paragraph you've got a sense of, okay, we are here and this is what we're doing in this paragraph. Because if you don't do that, your readers will get lost. So a great paragraph orients the reader into your argument. Nine. This is the really great stuff, very hard to do. Great paragraphing shows that there are alternative ways of thinking. What makes research so valuable is it presents with integrity alternative ways of thinking. So it says the, there are great scholars here and they're presenting these alternatives and you present that with integrity and clarity. So if we, with honesty, present the words of others and interpret them with rigour and clarity, then our case is actually strengthened by recognising their intellectual foundation. So this is really important. Anyone can go, oh, that person's an idiot. I do it a lot. That person's an idiot. That's great. That's an opinion. But there's something much more powerful through paragraphs when you give that idea and that person a paragraph on their own terms. This is this person's idea on these terms. This is where it's come from. This is the context. This is why it's meaningful. That's a great paragraph. And then you present your argument in the subsequent paragraph that maybe shows there are issues and problems with that, but it's based on a foundation of integrity. That person did this and we respect that. Your argument improves enormously. 10. A paragraph confirms the value of interpretation. E.H. Carr in 1961, wow, stated a remarkable thing in a topic sentence. History means interpretation. History means interpretation. Poof, 1961. So history is not one damn fact after another. It's not narrative, it's not chronology, it's not what white people think actually happened on the planet. History means interpretation. And you know what? Biology means interpretation. Physics means interpretation. Criminology means interpretation. The meat of every paragraph is interpretation. 
So we take a supposed truth, a supposed data point, and we do something with it. We bend it, we twist it, we interpret it, we analyse it, we make it dance. All disciplines mean interpretation. And we demonstrate that interpretation through every single paragraph that we write. So paragraphs are special because they connect up thinking, learning and knowledge development. They give a purpose to our writing because they give a propulsion to our argument. A paragraph translates our personal views, our vibe, into knowledge for public dissemination. Writing confirms your intellectual discipline. So each paragraph, if you will, is like a mini version of your thesis. It has to have particular characteristics, that bold and expansive opening, the clear and smooth conclusion, and it's got to do some things. It's got to have some functions. It's got to demonstrate your ability to control information, understand synthesis, understand originality and their differences, interpret the research of others, paraphrase well, but show that you can scaffold new ideas from the scholarship of others. So as you can see really, everything that an examiner is after from your PhD is found in a paragraph. So if I can change fairy tales, it's no longer Goldilocks, but we have the Hansel and Gretel bread crumbed trail through your argument. I wish you love, light and peace. Tea out.